there's two ways to approach today's gospel about Jesus's transfiguration. We can ask what actually happened or what does it mean? What happened is a mystery which defies all our efforts at explanation and analysis. So let's concentrate on the meaning of the event. What did the transfiguration mean for Jesus? Today's gospel marks a turning point in Jesus' life. At his baptism, Jesus becomes humanly conscious of the unique role and mission that had been given to him. There seems to be no limit to the possibilities before him. He was full of confidence and hope. But all of this was changing in the face of rising criticism and hostility. Jesus goes up Mount Tabor to pray about the meaning of it all. He takes his three closest friends with him. While he was on the mountain, Jesus is visited by two of the great heroes of the Jewish people, Moses and Elijah. St. Luke writes that they appeared in glory during their lifetimes, though, Moses and Elijah had experienced not glory, but rejection by the very people they were trying to help. It is significant that they appeared to Jesus just when he was discouraged by his own rejection. Equally significant is the topic of their conversation. They spoke of his exodus, which was about to fulfill in Jerusalem. This exodus referred to the impending suffering and death which Jesus was to endure. That death would not be the end of things for Jesus though. Calvary would be the gateway to new life for Jesus, as the exodus from captivity was a gateway to new life for the chosen people. Like Moses and Elijah, Jesus will pass through death to life. First, however, Jesus must accept suffering and death. That is significant of this event, the transfiguration for Jesus. It can be summed up very briefly. No cross, no crown. This fact, no cross, no crown, was an important fact of Jesus' friends Peter, James, and John. It's an important fact for us also. Just one thing that always sticks out for me too is the fact that Peter wanted to make tents and stay there. When a significant, wonderful thing happens for us, don't we want to stay and bask in it forever? The fact of the matter is that we are disciples and need to come down from the mountain to spread the gospel. The transfiguration also ought to remind us of our true nature and destiny. In our second reading today, St. Paul writes that we have our citizenship in heaven. In baptism, we became citizens of another world. So, we're to stand firm in the Lord because the frustrations, the trials, and the sufferings of this life are not the end. Even death is not the end. Beyond death, there is a new, risen life in glory. For us, though, as for the Lord himself, the fundamental law of life is no cross, no crown. Each person's cross is different. Some people carry very heavy crosses illness, or the untimely death of a loved one, personal discouragement, unhealthy dependency on situations, substances, or persons. For others, the cross may simply be the realization that our deepest desires, longings, hopes, and dreams will never be completely satisfied in this life, not in the ideal marriage, the most perfect friendship, or the most fulfilling career or job. No matter how much life gives us, we know that our reach far exceeds our grasp. The deepest desires of our hearts often remain unsatisfied. The fulfillment for all our longings, dreams, and hopes is not now. The place is not here. No cross, no crown is the law of life. And for those willing to accept the cross and try to carry it, it can become what it was for Jesus a passage to new life, to resurrection, to glory.